Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of The Fishing Teacher and much appreciated you guys coming by the channel to check today's video out. Really appreciate that. And guys, today I've got tips and advice on how to fish lily pads. Uh, lily pads are common bass cover all over the country and not all lily pads are the same. There's a lot of differences in the pads as far as the techniques and how do you fish them. So I'm gonna sort of give you guys an overview. We got some pads here. This is, I'm on a little uh, lake here in Springfield, Missouri that has some pads in it. I'm sort of gonna give you guys an overview of some of my favorite techniques to use around lily pads in today's video. Um, also guys, a quick reminder, just wanna let you know that uh, Tackle Warehouse, if you guys are looking to get a new reel right now, Tackle Warehouse has got a bunch of good sales on their bait cast reels. Um, I'll put my Tackle Warehouse link in the description of this video if you guys want to use that link to get a real, that's a good way to support the channel. So much appreciated with that. Okay guys, I've got a diversity of pads here. I've got some there that you can see are thick behind me. That, I'll do that. Yeah, right there, some thick ones. And then I got some thinner ones. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here. I'm sort of gonna walk down this bank and sort of explain to you guys how to fish lily pads based upon the density of the pads and how the pads are positioned. So let's turn the camera around, okay, here guys, we go. The first thing we'll talk about is what I call isolated flat pads. Now you can see these right here. These are not thick, they're some isolated pads and they lay flat on the water like this. Now, if you've got a situation where you got isolated flat pads like this, um, it requires a little bit different technique. This is a really good type of a situation to use some type of a moving bait through it. So what I've got isolated flat pads, one of my favorite techniques is to throw a spinner bait or chatter bait just around the edges of those pads. Sometimes a topwater lure like a buzz bait or a prop bait if the water's a little bit calmer. But you know, since it is a little bit thicker or thinner, you can get by with those moving baits. And another thing to remember about these pads, guys, is they have root systems on it. So when you see a pad, pay attention to where the root is coming because those roots that grow on the bottom have a lot of cover, sometimes even more cover than the pad itself. Uh, another technique that you can use on there is fan casting with like a wacky rig or a light Texas rig, like a Cinco Texas rig worm, just casting them in and around the pads. That can be a really good way to catch them. Um, on flatter pads. Now some pads, you can see right over there where those geese are, let me uh, uh, come out there. Some pads like that uh, grow out of the water. They grow above the water and they grow thicker. Now that requires a little bit different presentation. Let's walk down here and I'll sort of show you a little bit thicker pads. Now there's two type of pads when they get thicker. Ones are the thick pads that lay flat on the water and the others are pads that grow out of the water. Now based upon if your pads are flat on the water or growing out of the water, that determines your technique that you can use as well. Now, if you've got flat pads that are a little bit thicker, like they're, see they're starting to get thicker right here, this is a really good time to use like a frog, some type of a frog or a spoon, uh, something that you can throw in. Let me get over here, I'll show you a little bit better. But something where these pads are thicker, like throwing a frog in there and letting that frog set in the openings is a really good way to catch them. But if you get thicker pads, so thicker where they're growing out of the water, where you can't make a cast with a frog or something, that's when you need to pitch and flip. And that's probably my favorite way to catch them in lily pads is flipping and pitching. Now, a couple different lures that work really good. A Texas rig creature bait is really good to pitch and flip in there. A jig can be really good. I've done also really good pitching and flipping um, like a Cinco on a little bit heavier weight but some type of a lure that you can get in there without getting hung up on the limbs too much. So the technique that you fish these pads with depends upon the density of the pads. It depends on if they're out of the water or above the water. And sometimes it depends on the water clarity. Now, most of the time when you're fishing lily pads, they are generally associated with a little bit cleaner water because they filter water out there. So therefore when I'm fishing lily pads and I'm pitching and flipping them, I like to use more natural looking colors. Green pumpkins, watermelons work really good unless that water visibility is under a foot and a half or, or so. But the main thing guys is bass live in pads all year long. Now they're, the way they set up are completely different because see across the lake over there, that's a big line of lily, it's a big line of lily pads, see over there? So sometimes on those big thick fields like that across there, they will get on the edge of those pads and you can take like a chatterbait lipless crankbait and you can crank the edge of those pads the same way that you would crank the edge of a grass line and if there's any openings back in there pitching and flipping around that 
type of stuff. But my favorite type of pads to fish, guys, are right there where you see some type of a pad where you have an edge to it because that positions those bass closer to the edge most of the time. And if you've got these pads that don't have an edge, like right here, shoot, those bass could be in the middle of the pads. They could be roaming anywhere out here. But those edge pads tend to uh, isolate the fish a little bit more. A couple other things about fishing pads, guys, is pads are good all year long because what happens is these pads here are green and they're alive. But in the winter time or in the early spring or the late fall, the lily pads will die and the, the you don't have them coming to the surface. And the only thing you have is like the stem sticking out. Now I've caught a ton of good fish just fishing the stems where you don't, you don't have any pad whatsoever. All you have is a little stem sticking out of the water. And some of my biggest fish have come out of lily pad stem fields. So if you're fishing early or late in the year when the pads start to die out, um, one of the top things you can do with that guys is take a spinner bait or a chatter bait and reel that spinner bait or chatter bait through those pad stems. A, a swim jig also works good. Um, swim jig, chatter bait, spinner bait, all excellent lures and pad stems. Or another one I've caught them pretty good in is casting a Texas Street lizard on a light sinker. But the main thing, remember guys, that anytime that water temperature is over 50 degrees, I don't care if you have full grown green pads or dead pad stems, the bass are gonna be up in there. Lily pads offer a tremendous amount of cover for fish. They hold a lot of bait fish. They hold a lot of minnows, a lot of perch live in there. Um, it provides a lot of shade for the fish. They're just really, really good bass covers all the way around. So anytime you see them guys, fish them because there's fish living. If there's, if there's lily pads on a lake, there's gonna be bass around them. So hope it helps out. We'll talk later.